Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, and we've invited Mr. Adimola Kimbala, publisher of the Podium Media. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Adibola. Good morning. Nice to be here. Fantastic. Let's begin with the Nigerian Tribune newspaper. The headline reads, Inflation pushed 7 million Nigerians into poverty in 2020. That's according to the World Bank. Says, unemployment fuels crime insecurity. No gazette established grazing routes in Nigeria. That's according to Olani Pekun. Land Use Act vets vest all powers on land in governors, not federal government, he adds. And Falano says, grazing reserves law of 1964 was applicable to northern region. Also, Lagos Assembly to investigate Lasso VC crisis. Twitter founder Dorsey liable for NSAS losses. That's according to the federal government. We're not clearing your rots. APC replies PDP. Justifies huge debt profile. Also, Fulani threat. Tight security in Asaba, Agbo. Courts reopen after two months. Or your governor's moves beggars to resettlement center. Second batch of 3.92 million AstraZeneca vaccine doses expected in August. MTN says we may not guarantee regular services over rising insecurity. Appeal courts to Jagede to decide Jagede's case against Akiri Dulu today. And lastly, on the Nigerian Tribune, corruption, high-profile Nigerians after my life. That's according to the EFCC boss. All right, from the Nigerian Tribune, we'll move on next to the Pancha news uh, paper this morning. The banner headline there is a uh, military bombard bandit in northwest and north central forest uh, with uh, two riders there. NAF uh, bomb killed uh, 500 cows, 200 missing in Nasarawa, alleges uh, Nieti Allah. Now, report of 1,000 cows killed, unrealistic. That's a according to the NAF and troops comb Katsina uh, forests. Uh, there are several stories above um, the masthead of the Poncha news uh, paper this morning. Uh, let's start with some business ones. Uh, inflation pushed 7 million Nigerians below poverty line. That's according to the World Bank. Uh, Oshiba Jo uh, test right locally assembled electric car uh, says innovation. Uh, fantastic. All right, more stories there this morning. Uh, NLNG trains uh, seven or train seven. Ten billion dollars investment begins. Buhari won't against uh, delay. How a minister laundered uh, thirty-seven million dollars through property deal. That's according to the EFCC chair. Now, just beside the masthead, uh, reps confused as EFCC Amcon fight on Dezani Alizam assets and Nigeria expecting 3.92 million COVID-19 vaccine doses in July. Uh, more stories on the punch uh, this morning. Pastor kidnapped by Boko Haram eight months ago freed in Borno State. Woman arrested for the fraud and Oshun politician of 2.6 million naira. Also in the news this morning, Oyo uncovers couples among evacuated beggars in Ibadan. Okay, uh, politics. Now, we're not aware of, of our appeal court uh, has shifted election suit judgment. That's according to Akiri Dulu and the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. CEO absconds as Forex firm allegedly defraud 52 investors of 122 million naira. All right, experts blame insecurity as a Greek import exceed export by 500 and three billion naira. Those are the stories you could find on the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning. Mm, those are very big stories there on the yes, Punch. They are. Moving on now to the Daily Independent newspaper. The World Bank says Nigeria needs reform to curb inflation and to spur recovery. And also, the World Bank says inflation limiting growth, fueling crime, stands at 17.93% in May. Also, post tonight, 7 million Nigerians below poverty line in 2020. Above the headline on the Daily Independent, uh, Wiki tells Buhari you can't surrender your security duty to governors. $3.3 billion DSDR, $3 billion euro bond to boost Nigerians for an exchange position. Crisis rocks Abga as OKK, OYE claim chairmanship position. OKK fixes July 1st for Anambra. Koba primary. Oye says it's June 23rd. 
Buhari wants NLNG train 7 delivered speedily. Court resumes full activities after eight weeks, weeks strike. Head of EFCC, Bawa, says I've been receiving death threats for heading EFCC. Buhari seeks joint efforts of West African countries to fight insurgency, okays employment of dead NYC members' siblings. And lastly, on the Daily Independent newspaper, Yahaya says, I am the right man for chief of army staff. Quell this insecurity. That's according to the reps. All right, uh, Guardian has the economy <laughs> on its mind this morning as its main story. Rising prices weaken disposable incomes despite easing inflation. That's on the front page of the Guardian. Uh, with uh, some writers uh, here, as, as regards uh, the figures, uh, inflation uh, in May stood at 17.03%. Uh, more stories there are just uh, below the masthead. Uh, Nigeria, others uh, for clinical trials on novel Lassa fever vaccine. Okay, Yoruba elders uh, restate support for Tinubu's presidential bid. And of course, Igbo Congress wants against another civil war. Emo CP uh, arrests uh, five policemen for alleged extortion. All right, uh, more stories there on uh, The Guardian. AstraZeneca cocktail trial fails as Nigeria gets another 3.92 million uh, vaccine uh, doses with several uh, b uh, riders there. Nigeria to receive a second uh, batch uh, doses. Okay. And that reopens uh, vaccination for first COVID-19 uh, shots. WHO and PHCDA uh, won a third wave uh, in threat in Africa. And high exposure to malaria explains uh, low COVID-19 uh, cases and, of course, uh, deaths. Those are the stories on the Guardian uh, newspaper this morning. All right, uh, let's, uh, I just want to start with the Guardian. That's where we just left off. Uh, let's talk about this uh, day for one minute. Uh, rising prices weaken disposable incomes despite um, easing uh, inflation. Let's talk about this for a bit now. You know, Nigerians are really worried. Uh, what do we make um, of all of this? Uh, we go to the market. Uh, we, we plan to spend about 5000 uh, naira. That's what we pay. <laughs> well, that's what we spend ordinarily daily. Uh, or maybe when we go to the market. And when we get there, we find out that even the 5000 I cannot even buy half as much as what we ordinarily would have bought. So where are we really headed? Thank you once again for having me. Um, these are familiar stories. These are reports that we get to hear about Nigeria day in, day out. Starting with the story on rising prices, I think basically the reality of Nigeria's situation is the fact that we are a consuming nation. Okay, we don't produce enough to take care of our needs. When you don't produce enough to take care of your needs, demand will outstrip supply. So even if you increase salary 10 times, the rising cost of production will continue to make a mess of that salary increase. You look at the way things are in Nigeria, even in the agri sector, we are not producing enough to meet local demand, no talk of export. Okay, and I keep telling people, exchange rate is not magic. It's a very simple law of economics, demand and supply. The demand for dollar has treat supply of dollar. Basically, we import virtually everything. I mean, that has become a cliche now. We're not producing. We're not producing because one, the cost of production in Nigeria is very high. Electricity is not available. You've got to be, you have to be your own local government. You have to provide your own security. When you factor all of this into the cost of production, there's no way Nigerian companies can price their products and services competitively. That's why prices keep going up. And most of these factors of production, they are denominated in dollars indirectly because we don't produce most of these things. We import, okay? So you look at the poultry sector. The poultry farmers said about a month ago that they are barely able to meet 40% of local demand, domestic demand, 40%. So the remaining 60%, what happens to that? People have to import. That's why frozen chicken is still being imported in Nigeria today, through Benin Republic. And when you bring that in, it puts pressure 
on the cost of producing local chicken. So just like the World Bank said, we need to embark on reforms. What kind of reforms are we talking about? We need to focus more on the productive sectors of agri and manufacturing, okay? If you don't manufacture for local consumption and for export, prices will continue to rise. So the solution to Nigeria's economic problem is for us to be more productive. When we become more productive, cost of production will go down, prices of goods and services will also go down. As long as the average producer in Nigeria is struggling with ancillary costs that government ordinarily should bear, prices will continue to go up. Okay? Virtually everything in Nigeria today has gone up. Not because direct cost has increased, but there's indirect cost that manufacturers, uh, producers need to factor into whatever they are doing. And you can't blame them. They go to the market, they buy stuff, they have to find a way to spread the cost. So I align with, 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 with what the World Bank has said, we need to embark on reforms. Let us look at the long-term effect of what you are doing. Let's look at the bigger picture. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, most of our policies are focused on the short term. Government is under pressure to bring exchange rate down. Government is under pressure to ensure that inflation goes down. Inflation in Nigeria, the annual 10-year uh, inflation figure is over 12%. Which is one of the highest in the world. Switzerland has the best, which is less than one percent. Okay, any country that has the kind of inflation rate that we have, we have problems with exchange rate, because right now naira is no longer being seen as an attractive store of value. Most people want to keep their investment in foreign exchange, and what happens when they do that? It puts pressure on the naira. Everybody wants to acquire dollar. Everybody wants to buy dollar and keep. I don't know what the rate is as we speak, but if things go the way they are now, if, if we continue with this, maybe we're talking about $500, I mean $500 dollar to $1 before the end of the year, $600 to $1. There's nothing the CBN can do. We keep blaming the CBN. The CBN is, is not going to manufacture dollars. The CBN is not going to prevent Nigerians from importation. So we need to come up with policies that will address these issues. Let us look at the list, the, the, the list of prohibited imported items. Let's add more products to that list. And let's see how we can encourage Nigerians to patronize made in Nigeria goods, including education. Almost everybody wants to send children to Canada, to the UK, to the US. That is foreign exchange that is being depleted. Almost everybody want to acquire foreign items. That is foreign exchange being depleted. These are issues that we need to address. And when, when the World Bank is, is calling for reform, the World Bank is simply saying, let us look for homegrown solutions to our problems. Okay. Our solutions okay. are not going to be imported. They are homegrown solutions. All right. So basically, that is the way I look at it. Okay. Uh, another big issue here is, is a story we're seeing on the Punch newspaper. And on the Punch, it reads that military bombards bandits in northwest and forests of north central. So would you say this is something that the military should have begun long ago? Because they're saying that they're carrying out air raids every other day now to make sure that they, you know, basically smoke out these bandits that are terrorizing Nigeria. But um, Mietiala is now saying that the Nigeria Air Force bombs killed about 500 cows and that about 20, 200 others are missing in Nasarawa. But um, the Nigerian Air Force is saying that the reports of about 1,000 cows killed is unrealistic. What do you think about this? The success or failure of efforts in the Northwest, North Central will, will be judged or determined by the peace or otherwise that we enjoy in the next three months. If you tell us that you are bombarding the forest, that you are pushing them away, you are killing them, and one week later, these guys come back to kidnap 200 students then there's a problem. Mm. So this is what they've been telling us. Oh, they've, they've pushed them away. They've, you remember when this government came in, they said the Boko Haram has been technically defeated. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but Boko Haram has come back powerfully. So for me, I'm not, I'm not going to assess the military based on what they say in the press. I'm going to assess them based on what happens in that area in the next three months. 
if we do not get to hear about Boko Haram kidnapping or killing people, then I will believe that, yes, they are indeed bombarding them and they are making um, headway in the war against terror. But don't forget that propaganda is a very effective tool of war. So every military, every um, security, uh, all over the world, the military uses propaganda to fight the war. But in Nigeria, let us wait and see what happens in the next one month. And I, I, I sincerely pray that this bombardment is going to lead to the annihilation of Boko Haram. All right. Not that we, we yeah. All right, let's also talk about um, um, corruption fighting back. Um, the EFCC chair, Bauer, also made headlines in some um, dailies and this morning when he talked about uh, how he has been getting um, death uh, you know, threats uh, from various quarters. He also talked about how uh, a particular high-ranking uh, Nigeria, you know, uh, Senior know, minister. Yes, minister, actually. And he talked about 837 uh, um, million, you know, those uh, in uh, in, uh, in land deals. Uh, can you just talk about this issue for, for, for a bit now? Let's talk about the fight against corruption, how Bauer ha has um, done uh, since he stepped in as um, the chair of that particular anti graft um, agency. Yeah, for me, Bauer has been talking too much. Mm. He needs to keep quiet and do the work. It is to be expected that when you are the head <coughs> of an anti corruption agency, that people will threaten you. So it's nothing new. It's not the first head that will be threatened. So he should just focus and avoid all those distractions. It's too early for him to be complaining. He's barely six months old. He needs to deliver results. Okay? Corruption will always fight back. That happens all over the world. It is for you to keep your focus and make sure that you do whatever is expected of you. All right? And for God's sake, you don't come into the media to say a minister is this, is that. Give us facts and figures. Name names if you have to. When you have concluded your investigations, you, then you move to prosecution. Enough of this media trial. Enough of trying to look good, planting stories in the media to give the impression that you are working when, when in fact you are not doing anything. So we want to see results. When you say we you want to see, see results, result, when, yeah. when you say you want to see results, um, specifically now, what areas are you looking at? You said that it's, he's been barely six months uh, since uh, he has yeah. uh, you know, chairmanship of the EFCC. What specifics yeah. do you want to see? Uh, it's been just six months, according to he's you. Talking, what areas? He's telling us about a minister, right? Yes. Okay. We want to see the minister prosecuted. That is the result that we want. Mm. Okay. Move That's ahead and prosecute. You don't need to tell us. Let us wake up one day and hear that this minister has been arrested. You have enough facts and figures to prosecute him. And the prosecution goes smoothly and the person is jailed appropriately. What you find in Nigeria is that we have laws that are not being effectively um, um, uh, executed. The laws are there. And so someone gets arrested for corruption for the next three years, the case drags. And at the end of the day, it gets a very light sentence. So our laws, the way they are being implemented, actually encourage corruption. We are rewarding corruption. And I think we've had us to discuss this here before. Ochi Kalu today is, is, is literally a free man. And there are so many of them as there in the Senate. We look at their states, nothing is happening to them. So Baba should know that the EFCC uh, job that is being given is a very serious job. It is not a job that should be done on the pages of newspaper. We want to see people being prosecuted. That is the result that we are expecting. Okay, right. so if you are okay. saying that a minister made thirty-seven million dollars or whatever from property deals, what is the name of the minister? Let him go to court. So that is what I mean. I'm not aware of any other country that does media trial the way we do in Nigeria. Okay. So, so you believe in naming and shaming of those uh, who are found wanting? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Because, also, because we need uh -huh. to set very strong, I mean, we need to send very strong signals to people in government. We need to make very, I mean, a, a very strong scapegoat. We haven't been doing that. We have not been doing that. People get arrested, then they come up with all sorts of silly excuses. They are healed. They go to the court with wheelchair. It, 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 it's just a drama. It's drama. We're just joking. All right. That's not okay. how to fight corruption. Yeah.
All right. So all, all the stories we've seen here, um, I don't know if you'd say, um, if, you know, Farouk yeah, yeah, is also talking too much, but speaking to the House of Reps um, on Tuesday, he went in to say he's the right man for the job. You know, Rio added his experience, you know, in the front lines to say, you know, he should be the one, you know, f charging Nigeria's fight against, against, against terrorism. Um, do you see it that way? Who is that? We're talking about yeah, the, yeah, for yes, the chief of army staff. Oh, yes. Well, again, your actions and the results you deliver will convince us whether you are the right man or not. Okay? The president and commander-in-chief has entrusted so much trust in you. He has appointed you. Go ahead and do the job. Less talk, more work. Mm -hmm. You don't need to tell us that you are the right man. What we tell us that you are the right man is what we are able to deliver. Is the result you are, you are able to deliver. Okay, so the president has trusted him. We have no choice. The National Assembly, the, we practically endorsed him. So he should, he, should, he, should, he should get to work. He wants to see results. All right. Uh, we are some, more interested in results. Yeah. Okay, some questions um, came out from that particular screening yesterday at the Joint um, yeah. Committee sitting. And uh, one of them was uh, if there was uh, interagency collaboration amongst um, the various um, um, armed forces, that's, uh, you know, the Navy, the Air Force, and of course, uh, the, the army. And then again, another question that was raised was uh, uh, the, the, the need for a change for nomenclature from um, Operation Lafayette Dole to Hader and K. Would you say there are maybe loopholes or issues uh, within our fight uh, uh, against uh, insecurity in Nigeria? Yes. We have said it on this program that it is very pertinent for everybody involved to work in synergy, to collaborate, to fight terrorism. This is not the time to say I'm APC or PDP. This is not the time to say I'm Army or Navy or Air Force. Unfortunately, that is not happening. There's no collaboration. You 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 listen to a wiki telling the president that he shouldn't abdicate his security responsibility. And my question is, how much of intervention do you expect a Buhari to do in Benue, for instance? Okay? There's a governor, there's a local government chairman, what have they done with all the money, the security votes that they collect? What are they doing with it? Okay, so you expect Buhari to come to Benue State to help you to fight terrorism. Okay? And you have a sitting governor who claims to be the security, uh, the number one security man in the state. You have local government chairmen who are supposed to be closer to the grassroots. So, like I've always said, it is time for us to come together, work together as a team. It is only when we all work together that we can fight these guys. We cannot fight them if we continue to operate on base of um, APC, um, PDP, um, this, um, that. We need to come together because we're talking about human lives here. Mm. Okay, human lives have no coloration. They, 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 they do not um, answer to political inclinations. People are being killed every day. So whether you're a governor, in, or, I mean, you're a PDP governor, you're a APC governor, you need to come together and, and, and form, form a regional security network, okay? Like the guys in the Southwest have done with Amatekun, the Southeast, so we need more of these collaborations. And this need to drill down to even the local government level, okay? States that share boundaries should work together. That is the only way through which we can defeat terror. That's the only way. Collaboration, which is not happening right now, quite unfortunately. It's not happening now. Mm. There's a lot of buck passing. There's a lot of blaming. There's a lot of um, people dodging their responsibility. And that's why there's loophole for the enemy to continue to attack. As long as that loophole is there, we can't make any progress. Okay, let's uh, return to the Nigerian Tribune newspaper where a story there reads, um, the federal government says Twitter founder Dorsey liable for NSAS losses. So we know that uh, Lai Mohammed here um, speaking to newsmen yesterday, uh, Minister of Information and Culture, said Twitter is responsible for all the destruction that occurred uh, during the NSAS protest because Twitter uh, was the platform where Nigerian youth you know, came together to plan the NSAS protest and that Twitter allowed 
allowed Nigerians to have discussions about using Bitcoin to fund the protest. And that lots of policemen were killed, soldiers were killed, police stations were destroyed, warehouses, other public infrastructure. And that Twitter was liable or is liable for all the destruction during the NSAS protest. And you know, Lai Mohammed also said that it's unfair, and that's the word he used. It's unfair to say that um, the federal government banned Twitter because of a president's tweet. You know, Lai Mohammed said that, you know, bad Twitter was suspended in Nigeria because Twitter has been a platform where divisive comments have been made, you know, in the country. So uh, what's your, your perspective on this story here? And just to add to that again, uh, the minister also um, gave some conditions as to, uh, you know, the reinstatement, as it were, of Twitter. Uh, 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 he says that uh, Twitter has to be registered as a Nigerian company. Has and to pay taxes. Has to pay taxes in Nigeria and uh, follow um, the the licensing uh, rules of um, the NBC. So how do you react to all of this? Um, with due respect, uh, Minister Lai Mohammed is, is, is a clown and is a jester because he's not, he's not addressing the real issues. If there were no problems in the Nigerian nation, would youth have gone to Twitter to tweet about what's going on? I mean, we're talking about a root and a branch approach to solving the problem. We're talking about um, action and reaction, cause and effect here. You are looking at the symptoms, okay, and you are abandoning the cause of the problem. Twitter is not Nigeria's problem. Twitter is just a platform. Okay, if you ban Twitter, are you going to ban Facebook? Are you going to ban WhatsApp? Since Twitter was banned, people have been tweeting. It hasn't changed anything. People have been tweeting, people have been using WhatsApp, okay? So Nigerian government should stop ch chasing the shadow. Twitter is the least of our problem, all right? Lai Mohammed definitely will want to justify his, his, his portfolio as propaganda or information minister and to use various diversionary tactics, which have never worked and which will never work. Twitter is the least of our problem. What we need to do is to address the reasons why people are not, why people are not happy. Okay, we need to address the reasons why people have lost faith in the country. We need to address issues that border on youth restiveness, unemployment. Why are people angry? Suddenly, Nigeria, don't, everybody wants to travel out of Nigeria. Is that Twitter's fault? Okay, so you, 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 you do not arrogate common sense to yourself because the way the minister has carried on on this Twitter issue is just quite unfortunate. Okay. All right. In a in a decent society, someone like, like someone like the minister should not even be talking the way he is talking. He should have been called to order. All right. Twitter, let's, talk, let's talk about we, other we, issues now. We register. Fine. Okay. Twitter we pay tax. Fine. Does that stop Nigeria from tweeting about the problems in Nigeria? It does not. I do not know how Twitter. I mean, how getting Twitter to pay tax getting them to be, to, to be registered, how does that solve the problems that Nigerian youth are facing? How does that create jobs? How does that provide security? How does that provide employment? So you can go ahead, get Twitter, get Twitter to pay tax, get them to get registered. That is, by the way, we will still need to come back to the main problem. The fact that governance is not delivering the dividends of democracy, the fact that Nigeria is not moving forward at the pace it should be moving. The fact that there's total breakdown of law and order, the fact that life are no longer safe in Nigeria, are those Twitter's fault? Hmm. Yes, I don't go to do, I have to do. So, I mean, you, 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 you are just wasting time as a minister fighting Twitter. You're not wasting time. And you are denying thousands of young entrepreneurs who use Twitter to do their business. This is a government that cannot create jobs, you cannot provide employment. The little avenue that youth have to make money, you are denying them. A lot of businesses are suffering now. So I I, I, I do not know what is the motive behind what Lai Mohammed is saying or what he's doing. But I guess grandstanding has become a state policy in Nigeria, especially among the ministers. Okay, You do a wrong thing and you insist that what you have done is right. So grandstanding has become state policy. And that is where we are, where we are today. All right, thank you, Ademola. Thank you very much, Mr. Ademola Kimbala, yeah. publisher of the Podium Media. Mm -hmm. Have yourself a great day. Thank you so much for having me.
Wow, lots uh, of issues in the country of, to dissect. Lots of issues, serious issues. Uh, you know, the, the, the one of Twitter will always be, you know, reverber reverberating uh, you know, amongst some Nigerians because that's one platform uh, lots of people get to use, even with all the bottlenecks the, the federal government has seemingly uh, put in place. Indeed, and I wish we had time to discuss much yeah. more stories. We've been talking about investment scams. There's a story on the Punch newspaper uh -huh. that said a CEO absconded, uh, you know, when his Forex firm defrauded about 52 investors of 122 million naira. Whoa. We've talked about this on the breakfast many, mm. many times. Mm. You know, advising people to always do their research, Listen, get be financial wary advice. Of all quick fix exactly. You know, so it, it's a shame that people continue to be defrauded. And these people just seem to vanish into thin air. Just Protests like will begin that. again, you know, for you know this person to, to be mm. fished out and to pay them back their money. But really, how far can this the go? Fact that you have to do your due diligence and find out, do your own uh, research about any investment plan opportunity before you just, uh, you know, put in your money hook, line and sinker. Hmm. Anyway, um, it's a wrap here on Off the Press and The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a break and return to tell you two major events and protests that occurred um, this day in history. Stay with us.